trains. They've been the backbone of Britain for nearly 200 years. First Great Western runs the most complex fleet in the UK. It's every little boy's dream is to become a train driver. Operating on an iconic network. It's an electrifying environment for me. There's always a buzz. From under pressure depots, they will get the engine changed completely. Or if they don't, I should be wanting to know why. To overcrowded stations. Quick, quick, quick. We're literally attacked from every corner. We're going to be asked to leave the station. Every day sees an army of drivers, engineers and workers keep this huge train set on track. Braving the elements. When things go wrong, they can really go wrong and battling the backlash. Something about travelling definitely raises the blood pressure. Come hell or high water. Every day is different, trust me. Coming up, tempers boil over on the hottest day of the year. 23,000 a ticket, and, and it's just gone up in smoke because they can't get their trains and act together. The fight to find the fair dodgers kicks off. What do you keep talking about? Because I'm in charge here, sir. And drastic action is taken in the control room. What we've had to do this morning is basically take a hatchet to the train service front of a better phrase. The Great Western train network spans from the capital to Cornwall, the Cotswolds, Cardiff and beyond. Created by the engineering genius Brunel, it connects major cities with some of the most picturesque parts of Britain. The jewel in the network's crown is Paddington in West London. With 14 platforms and hundreds of services a day, the station caters for over 50 million passengers a year. The Paddington team work hard to keep the station running like clockwork. But today, it's not enough. And the weather, dry, sunny and very warm then for most of us. Highs of 30 Celsius is going to be very warm this weekend. A warning issued by the Met Office to be alert to the dangers of a heat wave. The Friday afternoon exodus from Paddington is always the station's busiest time. And today, to make matters worse, schools are breaking up, temperatures soaring and everyone is eager to escape the city. Um, next one now, there's an 1800 service. And there's one man charged with managing the masses. Services are already busy on a Friday evening, become um, doubly busy. As duty manager, Simon must keep passengers happy and trains running on time. I like being out there uh, and interacting with people. It's quite a challenge and if something goes wrong here, it's, it's magnified 50 times to what it, it can be at other stations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, signaling equipment's gone down around the Swindon area. There's been a fire by the side of the track. And so essentially what it means is no services can go through Swindon. A line side fire started by vandals in Swindon has destroyed power cables, making the line from Paddington to Swansea impassable. All the trains will have to be rerouted, causing countless delays. On a ticket, 23 pounds on a ticket, and and it's just gone up in smoke because they can't get their trains and act together. It's it's here now. It's cancelled. To get to to Cheltenham, go to Swindon. Go to Swindon. Go to Swindon. Yes, go to Swindon. But go to Swindon because I'm looking now. I can't see any other way. I can't see the. I was trying to figure out which was the quickest way. This situation is a first for Simon. He heads to Paddington's control room, where the team are working fast to try and reduce the impact of the fire before the rush hour kicks in. We can tell people, obviously, to wait for the next services, but at this point we're still not, we're not aware if it's going to be something that could be solved in the next hour, next two hours, three hours, or that's going to go on all night at this point. Any updates? They're going to isolate the branch because we can't, that's yeah, a dead yeah, no, dust, that's, that's, no. to deal with it anyway. If we can get people to swing so if we can yeah. keep the main line okay, open, right. And then, obviously, then it's crew and set availability as whether we can yeah. reintroduce the half, half service. Play it by ear, then. So we're working off a contingency plan now, which involves stripping the services down and essentially cutting our service in half. It sounds like it's going to be uh, 
quite a long one, so it's going to be more than a few hours disruption. Like to go through the whole of the Friday peak period, which obviously is quite a high uh, passenger fall at the moment. So, yeah. With only a skeleton service running, passengers are pouring onto already packed trains. This is what happens when you get one service an hour boarding for the aeroplane service. Now, you'll see behind you, there's a, uh, yeah, significant. Passengers may have managed to board, but this train isn't going anywhere fast. Basically, on this train now, um, on today of all days, the air conditioners are working in one of the coaches, so uh, we've got one of the fitters that works for the company, and they're trying to um, fix the air conditioning. Um, if they can't fix it, it's a question of whether the coach is going to be in service, but as it's already very heavily loaded, it's going to be a real challenge otherwise. Hello, it's uh, Simon Jeffrey, DSM on station, First Coast Western. Hello, mate. Um, would it be possible to get a few crates of water, say five, brought up to, um, to the gate line supervisor's office between platform three and four? If the aircon can't be fixed, Simon needs a plan B that'll get this train on its way. Right, to get them to bring up loads and we'll just stack them up there and we can just give them out as we need to. <laughs> So just, yeah, keep an eye on the board and see which ones go there first. As confusion mounts, Welcome Ambassador Maria is trying to keep passengers waiting on the concourse updated as well as she can. I can see people's frustration. I mean, if they're travelling every day, leaving work early just to catch the train, you know, we're all human. You know, we all want to go back home to your family. So, you know, there's still little things like 10 minutes delay can affect your your day and your mood, especially with nice weather like that. I can't blame them. Right. The three windows are run. No, the three ones are going to run. There's a fault on the train. So why don't we just put because I'm waiting for a fiscal measure whether the fault can be fixed or not. But finally, Simon gets the news he's been waiting for. Right, what do you it looks like it's fixed it to a certain extent, and so uh, it's still going to be a bit hot on the coach, but hopefully once the air conditioning kicks in, it'll sort that out. This train is dangerous. Pardon? This train is dangerous. Okay. There are too many people. Which one? Yeah, let's go, Mia, please. So we go, that's why we're taking no, off the information screen now. There's no air conditioning or anything. It's there's, dangerous. We've we just, we just fixed the air conditioning now. Oh, you have fixed it? Yeah, we fixed the air okay. conditioning. Well, then why don't you ask the people to move down? I think we can do, but unfortunately, you can shout at people as much as you want, but it's, if they don't move, unfortunately, I can't push them. It's, it's not going well, but. Um, you can only try your best in a situation like this. You're never going to make everybody happy. It's, um, it's just not, simply not possible. So, um, yeah, you're just doing the best with a, with a bad situation at this point. As Simon manages to get some services out of the station, now it's up to the onboard teams to keep the passengers calm. But the fire at Swindon means it's standing room only. Sorry, Troop, we're coming through again. Thank you. This train has probably got three train loads full of passengers on it. Most passengers today have probably been delayed for over one to two hours. With the heat and everything else, and it's a Friday, um, not good for our passengers. Excuse me, ladies. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please accept our sincere apologies. This again, delays today caused by the major blackout at Swindon. We can only try and get them on site. I'd like to think that we've come out and I've got them from A to B, kept them informed, that's the main thing. This service will still be calling at Fast Bar and Bristol Temple Meets. If you speak to them and you tell them what's going on, you don't fib, they're, they're great. Actually, not one complaint today and this is my fourth train. So we've been doing okay considering how bad it is. We do wish you a very safe and pleasant onward journey. There we go, folks. That's how you do it. Sorry, Trudy, just squeezing through again. Thank you. Well, feel it after a few more of those. <laughs> Coming into Bristol Temple Meads now. It's late. Um, book off. Train home. Shower and I think a sneaky little vodka. So hopefully tomorrow will be better than today. Coming up, the pressure builds at Paddington as Simon prepares for the full force of rush hour. There's a mistake with that one. It could end up having an impact on people. It's literally our breaking point at this point. And train manager Jody Edwards contends with a journey from hell. It's a little bit different to travelling on a Monday morning, isn't it? At 
Paddington, hundreds of people are trying to escape the capital for weekend destinations in the southwest. But a trackside fire caused by vandals has led to major delays. 6.58 is boarding now. We've been told 10 minutes delayed on the arrest of the service. Vandalism creates thousands of hours of delays, costing the network tens of millions of pounds each year, putting extra pressure on passengers and staff. OK, so about another 20 minutes and probably for that one. Oh, no, it's be 19, 20 years. For duty station manager Simon Jeffries, the shift is far from over as the rush hour kicks in. We're reaching the point now where we're getting our busiest train to the day. 715 Swansea in particular is on a Friday night, it's probably the busiest, one of the busiest trains in the entire company for the whole week. So, um, and it's going to have two train loads for the passengers because the previous one, the 1845, was cancelled. So, um, we're looking at the possibility of that without one of people not being able to board it, and uh, they're not going to be happy that they can't board it. But overcrowding isn't the only problem. Yeah. It's going to be 30 late start, driver PMB. Three zero. Yeah. Yeah. Can't do anything about it. We tried to talk to the driver. He can't. He needs his break. Oh no! It's just awaiting the driver because the driver needs to have a break as well. So I came on the train, taking the big train back. He needs to have a break. So let me just quickly pass that information to my colleagues. For safety's sake, driver hours are regulated, and the Swansea service Simon is banking on is currently without a crew. But this message hasn't got to the team controlling the screens, who announce it's ready to board. They boarded this service prematurely. The team that prepped the train didn't realise we didn't have a driver, so they asked the, screen, uh, the screens to be boarded. They were. We took them off after about five seconds, but in those five seconds, uh, one of these people were running for the service. Frustrated, a little bit frustrated. It's hot, and um, we're making mistakes. Mean, there's, there's a mistake with that one, but. It could end up having an impact on people. With no crew, passengers are asked to leave the train and return to the concourse. But there's one customer in particular who isn't happy. 80s pop star Steve Strange. Hello, mate. Sorry, my name's Steve Strange. Hello, I've mate. just paid 60 quid to get here to do a TV show. Okay. And I've just been told this is the Swansea train, which I've got to get to do the TV show. Okay. I've just finished Big Brother. Yes. And rushed, it's cost me £60 to get here. Right. And okay. now they've just been told it's not the Swansea train. Uh, it's, it, the, it potentially will be the Swansea train. We're waiting to see. We basically have, we're waiting to see if we've got the crew to run the train at the moment. So we don't put on the screens until then. I don't know where they're all going. I don't know where they're all going. The driver's here. The driver's here. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. With the train assigned a crew, Passengers have once again been told to board. Simon must now try and avert the stampede. Yeah, it's just about to board, about to board on the screens. Can you get, have we got one of them things you can pull across if need be? Sir? Have you got one of them things you can pull across, you know, the, to, to stop people getting on? We'll get as many people through as we can. Once it gets silly, I'll get you to pull, up, we'll get them to pull across. Unless you're specifically reserved in these coaches, there's not going to be any more space even standing on them. Unless you're booked in the seat, you're not going to even be able to stand. With customers trying to squeeze onto the train, Simon must control numbers for the passengers' own safety. Ben, I'm going to get them to pull the tapes across on it now, and we'll see how busy it is. OK? I'm going to get the tapes pulled across. Yeah, we've shut it off now, Dave. No more people will be coming through for this one from, uh, from the London end, mate. OK? We've had to pull the barriers across because at some point it becomes unsafe to have that amount of people on a train. It's literally our breaking point at this point. It's late, but Simon's finally able to get some passengers on their way west. Right, so we've got as many people as we can on that service. It's 51st time. And uh, that train is traditionally extremely busy anyway, so it's one of our busiest trains the entire week. So on a Friday with disruption, it's, um, it's impossible. After four hours, Simon and the team at Paddington get the service back on track. Can you help the train prep team put out the reservations in the seats? Yeah. But after a long, demanding shift, Simon is called upon to assist one more passenger. We had a train at 7.48, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, it was delayed, and uh, we have no no information as to what train we can catch. I mean, we we sort of tried to put as many. People. We've had four people on this help desk, three on that help desk. We've got these screens here as well, which is telling people what's happening. My my, my mother, who's travelling with me, is yes. 72 years old. I will. She uh, might be looking at the risk of sort, uh, standing on the train will, for an hour and a half. Yeah. I will sort um, something out yeah. for your mother. It's not deliberate. I'm not doing it to make people say it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I'm one of the figureheads. Exactly. Yeah. So after some uh, delicate I, diplomacy, it appears Simon has a satisfied yeah. customer. It does take a. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much. Mate. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. Cheers. Is that an issue? And we don't get it right 100% of the time. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that we do. No company does. But. It's trying to rectify that and trying to help somebody out. Another big trick. Fantastic. Chris, you picked a good day to be on nights. Nice. <laughs> Any good news? Any good news? Well, the the truck is no, uh, it's nowhere near as bad as it was four, three or four hours ago. Oh, okay. That's cool. the positive news. <laughs> Across the network, an army of workers man the platforms, trains and depots with one aim. Getting trains and passengers to the right place at the right time. Quick, it's going. If you're getting on, it's going. Every day sees the coordination of 1,500 services across thousands of miles of track through 276 stations. But there's one thing they can't control. Train wars! Train wars! Passengers. It is a very, very small minority of people that they get so wrapped up in their own particular life and their own existence that nothing else matters to them. You have people shouting at you. Bonkers! Drunken, loud, fighting. I've had very indecent exposures. They'll say, here's my ticket, and drop their trousers and stamp this and all the rest of it. Hello, hello, hello. I got verbally abused for over an hour by three women who turned out to be police officers. Peace out, yeah? Keep it real. Never a dull moment, as they say. Making sure passengers don't do anything daft on the train falls squarely on the shoulders of one person, the train manager. Stepping up to the challenge is a true intercity stalwart. You either love it or hate it. And if you've been here longer than six months, you'll be here for life. Today, Jody and her crew are taking the reins of the high-speed 2,000 horsepower 125. This train is the workhorse of the fleet and needs to be kept running on time at all costs. Our chariot awaits. But there's one journey that makes the heart of any train manager sink when it rolls around on the rotor the 8.45 Saturday night service out of Paddington to Swansea. This is the intercity shift from hell, and this week Jody's drawn the short straw. Could be good, it could be bad, but you never know. No, I don't look forward to this journey at all. I don't think anybody does. And we're off. For ex-flight stewardess Jody, this journey is one of the network's rowdiest, taking in some of the nation's booziest hotspots. If you think about it, when you go on a plane, if you're that drunk, you, you can't board the plane. But put them on a train and they seem to be able to do whatever they like. All tickets, please. You're literally on your own with, could be anything up to about 400 people. You're completely smashed. on on a train that's travelling over 100 miles an hour, it's a scary thought. You've just got to hope to God <laughs> that they stay in their seats and they don't try and do anything stupid. For Jody, the three-hour-long, 200-mile trip is always unpredictable. But one thing is guaranteed. You've either got a ticket, a pass or an excuse. Excuse me, sir? And some of the excuses are just brilliant. He's dead. A particular day, two boys got on the train, and when I came through, there was just one of them sat there with a rather large bag. And when I asked the boy who was sat on the train where his friend was, he just kept glancing at this bag. It turned out he was in the bag, trying to evade a fare. 
Snaking cross country first stop of the night is Reading. Here we have all of the very drunk Ascot tops. This is the start of the carnage by the looks of things. They didn't look too bad. They walk in. <laughs> How did you get on anyway? I, I lost. Yeah? <laughs> I'd love a beer, but, <laughs> but I might get sacked for that. So far, so sedate, but the night is young. As the service ploughs onwards, Jodie's bracing herself for what might come next. You can get people who are literally being carried onto the train, lost the ability to speak, they're incompetent, they're incontinent, most of them. <laughs> Just absolute mess. It was only last weekend. One guy decided to strip naked and have a poo <laughs> on the platform and throw it at the train. Next stop, South Wales and Newport, where the timetable coincides with kicking out time at the pubs. And tonight, they're all heading in Jodie's direction. La, 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 la. <laughs> Can't beat him. <laughs> Join them. <laughs> uh, this is where, well, our catering crew have uh, abandoned us and it's just us and a few hundred drunks from here on in. From now on, Jodie is flying solo and the only weapon at her disposal is her whistle. Train's late, but they're holding the door open for four girls who are drunk on the platform who look like they're not actually making any effort to get on the train. They know the train can't move if there's a door open and we've got to be towards the back of the train to dispatch. So what they'll do is one person will just stay at the front of the train and hold the door open for all their friends, knowing that they, we can't go anywhere. And when you're on your own and you've got eight carriages, it's difficult to, uh, to manage. The train's now running late and as Cardiff approaches, the worst is yet to come. Oh, yeah. True to form, trouble is kicking off. There's a group of people down there just screaming and shouting at each other. This is the clientele we, uh, we have to deal with on a Saturday night. It's a little bit different to travelling on a Monday morning, isn't it? Here we go. Time to lock ourselves on the train with them. We can only do what we can do. One person against a lot of drunk people, you're never going to win. Just walk away, leave them to it, and phone the police. For Jody, clocking off from this shift can't come too soon. Ladies and gentlemen, the next and final stop in a few minutes' time will be Swansea. More than likely to be a couple of people passed out, but the cleaners will give them a nudge. Job done. <laughs> As Jodie's shift rolls to an end, it's the start of some dirty work in the depot. See that? That's all toilet paper, and you know what's been with it when it's been splattered onto it. The Great Western Network runs the most diverse rolling stock anywhere in the country. From commuter stalwarts like the Thames Turbo and Pacers through to the mighty Intercity 125. At the end of every day, many of these iconic high-speed trains return to one of five depots across the network. To me. The company's most southerly depot is Long Rock, in Cornwall, where overnight up to a dozen units will be cleaned, checked and serviced, ready for the long haul to London in the morning. And for one man, no job is too dirty where the 125 is concerned. Excrement, that's probably the worst thing about it, working underneath these. Average day for me is a night. I start at nine o'clock and straight away there's probably a train waiting for us to go. 
it's pretty intense sometimes, especially if you've got a large fault, something that you weren't expecting, something that come in with only minor symptoms can be a big component change. And at that point then, the team has to really pull together to get that train out again on time in the morning. I do get satisfaction out of working on them, I suppose. My boy, he always loves trains, and I suppose if little boys love trains, then there's no reason why a grown man shouldn't love them. <laughs> Less appealing is what Will has to contend with on every shift. You can just see here, this is a beard of toilet paper. And when you have to replace any components underneath here and it's covered in this, I mean, it's, it's not entirely pleasant. I'll just scrape some off. Uh, see that? That's all toilet paper and you know what's been with it when it's been splattered onto it. This here is the offending article. This is the toilet chute and it straight into the track and 125 mile an hour I suppose it makes a mess I've not <laughs> I've not been there to witness it but I've seen the aftermath enough it's why they call part of the track the cess it's literally called the cess because it all happens down there 125s have loads that empty on the track thankfully for Will there will soon be a thing of the past I mean, you just got to think, these trains going into London are absolutely rammed full of commuters, and not everyone's been before they left the house. Weighing in at over 400 tonnes and travelling at high speeds, the power car and eight carriages, or set as they're known, see huge wear and tear on a daily basis. £2 million pounds a year is spent maintaining and refurbishing each of these giant machines. What I'll do now is checking the, the brake pads. It's got to be a minimum of 10 mil. Just to give you an example of how large they are, this is just one half. The actual braking force that goes through just one side of the bogey compared to your car is incredible. I'm just changing this because I think I saw a bit of damage at the top of it. I like to go on the safe side of things. So you just have to wind the uh, brake caliper back here so you get the full extent of the travel. It allows you to slide the new one in. Quite a job. Just secure it at the bottom with a clip, smack it in with a hammer, and that's it. Job done. As well as maintenance underneath the train, Will must also service and check the 125's massive engine. This is the skinny bank. Not to cast aspersions, but some people can't fit in that door. <laughs> so the engine is quite a big lump. It's a V16 diesel, four turbochargers. It's a couple of thousand RPM as opposed to maybe five or six at top end on the car. So it can run for really long periods of time, which is what it does. It's running 20 hours a day up and down the line. And it's a good engine, good, reliable engine. It is warm. It's a very hot engine. And, well, you know what your engine feels like when you've been riding around in your car all day. If you go anywhere near it, it is warm. Imagine a whole room full of engine. Will's service means this is another 125 ready to run smoothly. Starting up the engines. And that's it. Job done. Onwards and upwards. Will's shift is over for the night. The newly serviced train can now make its way back onto the network in time for the morning rush hour. Every train, as it enters service, is given a number, known as the head code, that can be tracked throughout the day. Ensuring trains are where they should be is the job of the staff at the control room in Swindon, aided by a computerised system that monitors progress 24 hours a day. Network rail and train operating staff sit side by side, overseeing the entire network. And today, first has one man in charge. Getting people um, from A to B is what the railway is about, it's what we do. If everything was perfect day to day, then we wouldn't actually need to be here. But day in, day out, things go wrong, sometimes within our control, sometimes not within our control, that mean that we have to change the plan. 
As the operator's man in charge at Swindon Control, Dave Slater must assess and respond to any issue that may disrupt the train service. Sometimes we have to take the unpopular decisions, but it's always done for the greater good. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Well, that's GSMR um, emergency call, so that could be anything, usually fatality. Just left Taunton. There is a herd of cows in the downstairs. Did you catch that? I did catch that. Let's hope they move shortly. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> There's about three under the train. Two, uh, they haven't even accounted for yet. Yeah. Three dead. Did I tell you about the one we killed at Seven Tunnel Junction once? No. Cow was walking down the middle of the forefoot. Train comes up literally right behind it. Literally smashes up the back end of the cow. There's a photograph of the driver stood with his arm over the cow like that. Oh. And the, the cow is basically mounted on the couple of the train. Oh, no. yeah, it's not, yeah. They're not small creatures, are they? This one sounded like a bloodbath. Mm. Cows on the line are all part and parcel of Dave's day, as managing the Great Western Network means juggling the rural stretches of rail with the crowded lines into the capital. I remember very, very vividly joining Greater West and having been a sort of West Country bumpkin and now finding myself in charge of 178 miles worth of railway um, going into London, it was, it was rabbit in headlights, it really was. Having been thrown in at the deep end, Dave's learnt everything he knows from first-hand experience, including having a philosophical outlook on his job. You just have to accept that whatever happens, happens. Um, we're as much a, a victim of fate as we are circumstance. Monday morning rush hour is always a test of Dave's outlook, and today is no exception. Ah, Mr. Richards, congratulations. Welcome to um, Bedlam. Bedlam? Mm. Oh, dear. The peak service has barely started, and Dave has a major issue to tackle between London and Reading. The, the, the Thames Valley is, as a route from Reading to Paddington is absolutely pivotal to virtually everything we do. We often talk about the sort of the golden 12 miles on Great Western effectively being an airport junction here through to Paddington. If we can get that right, we stand half a chance of actually getting people where they want to get to, when they want to get there. The problem we've got is the overhead electric line that provides power to the Heathrow Express's trains um, has become detached. NetRail have had to close the line for safety reasons. Um, obviously, they don't want a 25,000 volt electric cable landing on someone's head. So, of the four tracks available into Paddington, we've only got this track here and this track here available for service. That's effectively 50% of our capacity. It is the worst time of the day for doing anything like this. Network Rail have to fix the overhead cabling, but on the front line, Dave and the control team must find ways to minimise delays to the service. Every minute a train is delayed carries a fine of up to £200. With so many trains and connecting services affected, fines can soon rack up into thousands, but more importantly, passengers can't get where they need to go. I'm afraid it's approximately 20 minutes delay. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So I don't really care how you oh, logistically you, you sort out. I just want to yeah, get home to sometime get there, tonight. Yeah, understood, yeah. It's taken me more time to get from Reading to here than it's taken me to fly from Montpellier this morning to Yeah, London. yeah, I can imagine it's very frustrating. Is that the, the earliest one that we've got? Yeah, the next one is, I believe so, it's 9.25 is the next one. Yeah. Why aren't those trains running? What right. about our schedule? All right, I'll get some trains printed off now and we'll get a plan together and go for it from there, all right? Yeah, OK. Dave and the team must now get busy rerouting trains to avoid the problem area. A logistical nightmare calling on all ten years of his experience. Can you make arrangements to terminate one Papa 17 at Twyford, please? Keep that out of the Thames Valley. Okay. If you can look at holding one Fox 05 back for a couple of minutes to get to one Alpha 08 through first, that'd be grand. I'd look to keep those two branches self-contained if I were you, just keep them out of, out of the sort of main line. It's an exercise in keeping multiple numbers of plates spinning at the same time and hoping that luck is on your side. So what we've had to do this morning is basically take a, a hatchet to the train service front of a better phrase. Um, we've actually had to take the stopping trains out at either Langley and Westrater, which is a bit rubbish if you're trying to get to London from those stations. But actually, in the bigger picture of it, it then means we can get people from Reading, people from Bristol, people from Swindon, people from Gloucester through, albeit with delay. We can only do what the infrastructure allows us to do. We can move boxes on screens quite easily, but the problem is, in each of those boxes, 
is a train that could run out of fuel and there's a driver that could run out of driving hours. I actually had a controller in tears because everything she was doing to try and get the service back right was being foiled by some other reason. So she'd try A, that would go wrong. She'd try B, that would go wrong. And it just got to absolute despair. Um, you know, it, it, it does affect us. I think people will get there, but the trains are going to be busy, they're going to be full and standing. It's not a great start for a Monday morning in any stretch. It may have been a rotten rush hour, but Dave and the team's rapid response has stopped the problem spreading network-wide. This morning, granted, our, you know, hand on heart, it was rubbish. We took some decisions that were quite hard decisions about which trades we were going to cancel. Uh, those decisions, I personally feel, have proven to be the right decisions. Whether people out there on the trains understand, we've done the best we can, I don't know. We could perhaps do better, and that's part of this job, is just looking at what you did and what you can improve, but I, I honestly think that we did a good job. Coming up, it's the end of the line for fair dodgers. They're all pretending to be children. And tempers flare up on the gate line. Gentlemen, it's getting to the stage where you're going to be asked to leave the station. Keeping an enormous train network moving comes with a big price tag. With a single train alone costing two million pounds a year to run. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. But from Paddington to Penzance, Weymouth to Worcester, one thing is true. Some people are going to take advantage. Excuse me, buddy. Have your real ticket, please. Where have you travelled from? Um, I don't remember. Fair dodging costs the UK rail industry an estimated £240 million a year. First, has one man who makes it his mission to stop the freeloaders. Have your tickets ready. Show your tickets, please. There's a hard core of our passengers who will go to quite considerable lengths to avoid paying anything. Those are people we're kind of interested in. Dave's been patrolling platforms and trains for 13 years, and with a previous life as a debt collector for a bank, he's no stranger to challenging cheats. The record for the number of people I found in the high-speed train toilet is seven. <laughs> but you'd be amazed how many people want a travel toilet class. Every day is different, trust me. Tickets, please. But as far as Dave and the Revenue Protection Team are concerned, no ticket means only one thing. OK, he's got 21 days in which to appeal it. I've told him what to do. That's the name of the game. One major weapon in the fight against fair dodgers is the gate line operation, employing large numbers of revenue staff in a single location to make sure no one travels without the correct ticket. Today's crackdown will see Dave and his team target Windsor and Eton, surprisingly a regional hotspot for fair evasion. It doesn't matter whether you're the poorly dressed person or the best dressed person. In the last 12 years, I've heard virtually every excuse. Never judge a book by its cover. Before the team can start nabbing ne'er-do-wells, Dave must make sure all alternative station exits are secured, leaving ticketless travellers with nowhere to run. The side gate at the far end will be locked. We're checking both on and off here. But despite taking every precaution, Dave knows only too well how far some people will go to dodge a fare. The last time I was here, died a young man threatening to jump over the edge. He climbed over the barriers and got behind this gate and was on the wall thinking of jumping. As you can see, it is a very long drop. And he'd gone to the end, swung round, and was stood on this wall, threatening to do a jump. We managed to grab him and pull him back. Cheats will go to extreme lengths to avoid paying. Passengers who pay subsidise those who don't. And however far today's freeloaders have come, Dave won't be taking any prisoners. They may have travelled some distance without any ticket check. Uh, we're there to regulate that by way of an issue of a penalty fare or report for prosecution if appropriate. You don't know what's going to arrive on the next train. It's a bit like watching a Western movie. When it gets quiet, the Apaches will attack. <laughs> 
Have your tickets ready and show them to my colleagues behind me, not to me. Bags of time. Dave's prophecy may be about to come true as a group of teenagers attempt to blag their way through the gate line with the wrong tickets. They're all pretending to be children. They're probably at college, which means they're over 16. So um, they're playing up. Purchase a new ticket, sir. You bought that ticket fraudulently. Fraud A and B conversation. See yourself out, love. Wonderful. But you're still not travelling, gentlemen. The name is not to buy. If you buy and ramp it up, you give them the excuse. Don't give them the excuse. It's crucial Dave and his team remain calm in the face of any provocation. Right. Can you move out of the way, gentlemen, please? What do you do? Because I'm in charge here, sir. In circumstances like these, verbal abuse can quickly escalate into physical violence, a situation Dave and his team must avoid at all costs. Right, gentlemen, it's getting to the stage where you're going to be asked to leave the station. Unless you buy adult tickets, you will be leaving the station. You are. With neither side willing to back down, Dave is left no choice but to call for backup. I have six males who have been causing us a little bit of a problem. They've been told to buy adult tickets. They aren't making any effort. I'd like them removed from the station, please. My patience is not inexhaustible, and I felt that uh, we were getting nowhere with it, so I phoned Thames Valley Police, who are fairly close to hand, and um, if needs be, they will attend. With local police now on high alert, it seems the leader has decided to leave the station, while his friends head to the ticket machine to purchase the correct fare. As soon as I, when I went on the phone, and one was stood behind me listening to what I was saying, you notice how it went? The time for messing around was over. They've been told what to do on more than one occasion. We're not going to play ball. Well, I'm not going to play ball. Absolutely amazing. Well done. Thank you. You show your ticket, fella. Most of the teenagers have now shown the right tickets and legally entered the platform. Here we go again. Round two. Anyone passing the ticket? I saw them pass those. To me. To me. To me. Nah. You look after size. me to give you that chance. Check the printed time. That ticket's been passed on. It's been passed on. Yeah. You look after me to. Oh my. You look after me. Nice try. Off you go, sir. You look after me to buy a ticket. Good night. This young man's attempt to use a ticket passed through the fence has fallen at the first hurdle, and Dave's gate line operation can now see the day out unbreached. Finally got a ticket, have we? Don't talk to me. Goodbye, sir. By not biting, I think I've got a better result. Game over, day over. Well done. Coming up next time on the railway, everyone gears up for the country's biggest music festival. Please move as far forward as possible. Don't mind the smell, that's just Glastonbury fresh. And it's all hands on deck as Paddington faces one of its toughest days of the year. I request six cages, yeah? How many have we got? Two. Should have been done overnight. No comment. <laughs> 